those most of y'all know, we started to do this polyester resin test uh, last week, and I have actually two different um, places here where it, it is complete. Um, if you recall the test, what I'm really doing is validating the preparation of the surface and what I need to do. Um, this is ground all the way down to fiberglass, and this is just this uh, kind of junky surface smoothed up a little bit. Uh, Rather than destroy this today, which was actually my intent, I think what I'm going to do is put a fairing coat on here. It was a little cooler early in the week, so I couldn't do this sooner, but I'm going to go ahead and do that now. Um, I went ahead and ordered two things this week. Um, one, at the suggestion of somebody who commented on our blog post, so thank you, uh, about getting an actual catalyst dispenser. So I picked this up from a company called Fiberglast. Um, I've not used them before, so I'm not really recommending them at this point, but I'm, I'm gonna be using their products for the first time this week. Uh, but this is a, a catalyst dispenser. Uh, it, it, I think I got the uh, 16 or 16 ounce one, maybe it's 32 ounce, I don't recall, maybe 16 ounce. Uh, but you basically fill this up with a catalyst, and then what you do is you, uh, you squeeze the, the bottom of this, and the, uh, the catalyst goes up the tube and into this container, and it starts at two and a half cc's and goes up to 35 cc's. Once you've dispensed out the amount of catalyst you want in the top half of this, uh, it's just a matter of pouring it out into your, your resin. Um, and this will also store the material as well, so I don't have to worry about you know, transferring it in and out of this container every time I go to use it. So I'm looking forward to that. It's going to be interesting, though. I only bought two ounces of MEKP. I've used probably a third of it already, so heck, it's... Well, actually, that straw goes down there pretty low, so it'll probably still work fine. The other thing I got was this fairing compound, and uh, I'll go ahead and open this up now so you can take a look at it. Um, their website had a lot of different materials. That really seems like a pretty, um, a pretty good site for gathering fiberglass supplies and epoxy supplies. They had a very comprehensive site, um, and what I ended up getting was this 1131 talc. Uh, there's a bunch of different materials that you can mix into your resins for thickening purposes. Uh, this one specifically is designed for fairing. They had a couple different ones for fairing, including micro balloons. But what I liked about the talc is it's actually um, small, flat surfaces. And the idea is when you, when you lay this out, it starts to take these little um, flat pieces of talc and they spread out and it becomes another strength layer. Um, but it's supposedly easier to sand. So it's specifically designed for fairing. I went ahead and picked it up. It's interesting. It's interesting because when I bought the, um, the thickening agent for the epoxy resin from West Systems, it is light as air. This this weighs, you know, this thing feels like it's a, a pound and a half or something right here. So there's quite a bit in here, but it is, and I'm looking at it, it is really a fine powder. So I'm gonna mix up just a little bit of this and uh, we'll go ahead and try fairing on this. It'll be the first time I've ever done that. Here we go. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and do this uh, fairing now. Again, this is my test all the way down to bare fiberglass, just roughly ground down on this side. We have our uh, cloth down, it looks good. Uh, I'm not even going to sand this. I just want to see what fairing looks like on these. I've got my resin poured up, and I'm about to uh, mix up my catalyst here. Now on my container here, I have two and a half and five. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to squeeze this until I get the right amount of MEKP here. All right, that's perfect. Unlike epoxy, they say you should mix the uh, catalyst in after your thickening agent. So I am going to start putting in my, my talc. It's feeling pretty good, but I think I actually want to get that just a little bit thicker for what I'm doing here. Okay, this feels good. I'm gonna go ahead and pour my catalyst in, make sure it's still sitting at the amount I need. It is. Come on, rich it. Make it just a little bit richer. Given the hour of the day, I only have so much sunlight left. This is the material here that was ground all the way down to fiberglass. And uh, just gonna give this a thin spread here.
I mentioned this is my first time doing this. I kind of think it might be a little easier if this was um, this was a little bit thicker, but I think I'm getting a sense for how this goes on. So if you recall, we had our test piece here. This was ground all the way down to fiberglass. This wasn't. Put a couple of layers down, and we're just gonna see how well we can sand that smooth. I'm just gonna do a quick sand on this just to see what a fairing compound looks like before we ultimately destroy it. I'm obviously not looking to do complete finish work here. I just wanted to see what it would look like, and I didn't even add a uh, wax to this particular um, resin. Uh, this is a no wax resin, and I think, as I think I might have mentioned in a previous video, which is really a layup resin. Uh, in other words, it remains a little bit gummy or a little bit tacky, uh, and the purpose for that is so that the next layer adheres very well to it. Uh, normally, what you do on your last coat or your top coat, you add some wax. It essentially creates a film over the top to allow a complete and full cure below it. Um, anyway, I didn't do that here. Again, I, this is a destructive test, so I don't really care about the finished coat, but I was curious to see how well the fairing compound would sand. This is the first place I did the polyester resin fairing compound, which was essentially talc, much like micro balloons, and it creates a flattened layer that is easily sandable. Um, this feels great. Uh, this is, I would be very pleased with this as a top coat. Um, and then, you know, ultimately, I, I probably wouldn't even have to get it quite this smooth. The reality is I'm going to put a non-skid non pattern on top of it, so there's no sense in going completely crazy trying to get, you know, a hull level shine on it. Uh, this is the second place I did it, and you can see the difference. You can see little gaps here where it wasn't very smooth. This one was completely smooth, and that, I, you know, I don't want to go as far, uh, as far as smooth as glass, but, but darn near, this feels great. So I'm very pleased with the results I have. Um, I have a bit of a renewed confidence in my ability to actually do this. Uh, so now, let's tear this crap up. And if you remember from some of the other fail videos, I would actually be able to take these strands and pull this. There is no way that's happening now. Well, that's good news. So what I'm attempt to do here is I'm going to attempt to essentially get a small pry right between the two layers here, and then ultimately open it up with a crowbar and try and uh, tear it off. It's the reason why I left these hanging off so I'd have something to pry behind. It looks like I'm able to get a little bit in there, so that's good. Like that. You might be able to hear it. I get a little bit of cracking going on here. That's good. And now it's just a matter of uh, busting this thing out. So I am uh, now going to attempt to get this pried in there. So I can hear it. Let's see if you can hear this a little bit. Put the microphone by it. You can hear just a little bit of uh, the crackling as the material separating hammer this in, I've moved it over a little bit, and I can see it is starting to separate. Remember, I only have a piece that's about four or five inches wide here, so I do expect it's gonna break loose. And really, what I'm doing is I'm trying to judge, um, frankly, with not scientifically here, but I'm trying to judge, does it peel off significantly easier on one versus the other, so I know what my surface prep needs to look like. Go ahead and separate this, just so you can see. Stand back a little bit, okay? I will say, it's adhered pretty darn good. Um, you know, can it come off? Sure, but the boat's not likely gonna be taking this kind of a, this kind of an odd force. All right, so, so as you can see, uh, this is the side that I didn't ground all the way down to fiberglass. You can still see the white of some of the pieces of gel coat, and you can see where it, it was attached over here, so it definitely adhered to it. Um, in some cases, this split right on the actual roven, 
Roven woving? Woven roving, sorry. You can see it actually split right on the woven roving, and some of the initial polyester resin is still attached to this surface, some is on this surface, some places the gel coat peeled up and is still stuck to here. So I've got pretty even adherence to either surface. So I'm just gonna go ahead and leave that kind of dangling as it is right here, and I'm gonna go ahead and tear this one up and see what we have here. And this is the side that was ground all the way down to the glass. This is taking a pretty similar pressure. I will say, um, yeah, this is similar pressure here too. I'll just go a little bit more so you can kind of see how this is coming apart. You hear the sirens? Is that a fire truck? All right, now we're gonna go ahead and slide this open. So you can see the difference in the surfaces below. You can see the lower one is where it was actually ground all the way down to glass, the upper one where it wasn't. And in both cases, you can still see it separated right a little bit here at the woven roving, and there's still some of the initial polyester resin adhered to the uh, original surface. So even on this one where it was ground down to glass, the epoxy layer was interesting. It actually pulled some of the existing glass off of the old deck. This one, it's still separated at that, at that area, um, which tells me I get a little bit better adhesion with the epoxy resin, but Again, I feel like this is an absolutely strong bond. This is certainly enough for the deck. I'm doing a four inch by 10 inch section as opposed to the boat, which is gonna be 15 feet wide and you know 35 feet long um, it, forward of the actual cabin house. So this will end up being a complete uh, additional skin on top of what's already there. Remember, this is, this is gonna go on top of the existing top skin for additional strength. I still have at least a half inch thick um, hardwood core, so it's, I have a mahogany core deck, and then I have the lower skin, which is another 3 16 to quarter inch thick uh, fiberglass skin on the inside. And this thing is a really thick deck, and this extra is just gonna give me a lot more strength and stability. Um, and honestly, for me, it's also a great insurance policy for future leaks coming into the deck. This will be an entirely new surface, which will prevent any of the water seepage down through existing screw holes, which I've patched now today, but you know, it just takes one or two of those to come out to start having a, a water ingress issue. This would prevent all of that. So I'm really happy with this. Clearly, I, it could delaminate. You can see where I can absolutely separate this from the deck. So it's going to be critical that I have a good mixture and a good bond when I put this first layer down. Um, and I've got to do that across the entire, the entire surface. So very interesting setup here. Um, but this is a great test. Thrilled with what I saw here. I'm probably going to take a little topside paint and just throw it on here because I'm curious what it'll look like. I can see here too where it bent that far. You can see these little checks that are in it. So it started to crack the surface of the fairing compound, um, which probably goes to show if you were to drop something heavy on the deck that that could certainly happen. But that was a lot of flex you saw going into this to do those checks. You know, if my deck flexes this much, I probably have bigger issues. <laughs> We pulled all the teak decks up, uh, we removed all the screw heads, we filled all the screw holes with epoxy. We had places where it was delaminated between the hardwood core and the upper layer of the skin of the deck, and we've repaired those. Um, the thought now is we want to put a couple layers of fiberglass over the entire deck for two primary reasons. The primary one is water control. We would not have any risk of any of those holes possibly being open and letting water ingress back into the core. The other one is with the teak coming off, we thought maybe we took a little bit of the rigidity of the deck off of there. I know it's not structural, but still, other layer would just add another layer of strength to the overall deck. So those are the two primary reasons. The big question then came of epoxy resin or polyester resin. So this test I did, we took a piece of the existing deck, we took one section, we, we ground it fairly smooth. We used 36 grit, um, left the old um, gel coat and paint and whatnot on it, just sanded it smooth. It wasn't all the way down the glass. Some places it was, some it wasn't, whatever it took to get fairly smooth. Um, and it was a fairly easy test. And it was a fairly easy test. The other section of the deck, we then ground all the way down to bare fiberglass. In the first test, I did this with epoxy resin and I, I used those two different ground surfaces and I applied um, cross strand mat, and, uh, yeah, well, on the epoxy test, I used two layers of woven roving and some cross strand mat. I then did exactly what you saw me do in this video. I separated them to see which was stronger. Ironically enough, the one that held better was the one that didn't go all the way down to the glass. 
Then I wanted to repeat this test using polyester resin. The difference is about 30% the cost to do polyester resin versus epoxy resin. So that's what this test was. Again, same thing, ground all the way down to glass, ground fairly smooth, cross strand mat, woven roving and cross strand mat on top of it using polyester resin. In this case, I also put a top layer of fairing compound on top just because I wanted to see what it was like to actually do fairing didn't change the overall test, but it gave me an opportunity to do that just in time between videos here. So there's my test. Hope you guys enjoyed this. Thanks a bunch and safe sailing from the Sailing Vessel Dream Chaser and our entire crew. Bye y'all. Hey everybody, thanks for watching and please follow us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, or even Tumblr. Please take a moment and go over to our website at svdreamchaser.com to download free resources for cruising and how-to projects. Get your thumbs and mouses ready. We also have a couple of links right on the screen for some other playlists and videos that we think you'll enjoy. Thanks for watching, fellow dreamers.